Ratings provide insight into the final product by using scales and measurements against specific criteria. For Wallatopia, we decided that even though wallets are a very personal item and by all means subjective in the decision to like or dislike and ultimately purchase by the individual, it was important for us to provide some high-level categories and guidance using a weighted final score. The goal was to provide insight into our review, balancing what wallet consumers typically look for when making wallet purchase decisions. One piece of criteria we did not include on purpose is the concept of value. Value is such a subjective dimension that it is near impossible to provide an objective rating. What we did in place of using value was to provide a balance between two criteria, quality and price, to influence the overall rating while providing a window into perceived value. With that said, let's look into each of the rating criteria, then we'll look at how they're weighted for the final score. The first criteria is quality. This is pretty straightforward. Quality includes considerations like construction materials used, reliability, longevity, and expected durability. Quality plays a role as a product's total satisfaction quotient, but it's more than just that. Top considerations for wallets include the main material used. For example, a leather wallet would be what grade of leather was used. Was the sewing single or double needle saddle stitched? Was it done by hand or by machine? Are the edges burnished, painted, or turned edge? The second criteria is price. Price can be a bit tricky and is something we use as a backstop against all the other criteria. It balances the quality, features, usability, and even the subjective perception criteria. If a wallet is very innovative, uses high quality materials, exceeds feature expectations, presents itself well, and the price is very attractive, then the price rating will be very high. On the other hand, if a wallet's high price is based primarily on the brand name or obviously exceeds material cost by a large margin, then the price rating will be low. Ultimately, the adjustment anyone can make regarding the accuracy of the price rating is subjective. For example, if a person loves the brand, then the cost may be acceptable. Conversely, if the emotional connection to the wallet overrides any concern for cost, then the price is of no concern. We look at price in comparison to the overall picture as objectively as we can. Features is the third criteria in the formula. What's included in this? For the type of wallet, does it provide the basic functions expected? Does it include a cool factor? Is it innovative? Is the styling clever? And is it practical? There are some wallets that are incredibly clever and innovative, but they miss many basic features of the type of wallet it is. That trade-off may be acceptable to the consumer, but we believe a type of wallet like a slim, bifold, or band have certain minimum features requirements before being clever or innovative. If that benchmark is missed, then the score will be lower. Usability is the fourth criteria and it's very simple. Can the wallet function efficiently, effectively, and with as little friction as possible in daily use? Meaning, can you pull it out of your pocket easily, access the contents without delay? Replace what you pulled out without difficulty and put it back in your pocket quickly. It may sound easy, but you'd be surprised how many wallets miss this simple formula. Often, the simplest wallet might receive a higher score because the tried and true designs are tried and true for a reason. The final rating criteria is perception. This is somewhat subjective, but ultimately it includes a few key considerations. Does the presentation of the product give the impression that the company cares about how you see them? Did they put as much thought into their packaging as the product? Does the company stand behind its products with an expected warranty or guarantee coverage? If you fell in love with their products, will they be there for you if something went wrong? For each of the criteria, a scale of 1 to 5 is used. 1 is the lowest and 5 is the highest. If a product meets expectations, it will receive a 3. We have many products with final scores that group in the middle as it takes quite a bit to excel out of what you'd expect but the ingenuity of wallet inventors and creators continues to amaze us. Now for the weighting. Here is the formula. Final score equals quality, 30%, plus price, 20%, plus features, 10%, plus usability, 25%, plus perception, 15%. As you can see, quality is the high mark as it should be, followed by usability, that's why we have a wallet, and then by price. 
Features, while interesting, don't always make a great wallet, but the companies who produce them do, which is why the perception mark exceeds features. You now understand the background and thinking that went into the Wallatopia rating system. We'd love to hear from you in the comments or by email what you think of this and what you would change and why. We're always open to suggestions and insights from the world who purchases wallets.